All right, guys, so I decided to jack the car up outside just to get the bumper off because this thing needs to charge. So I have more space outside and it's kind of shaded right here. So first thing you gotta do is take off the bumper. Um, there's a bunch of screws over here that have to come off and then you have to remove the fender liners, but my car doesn't have fender liners in the front. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts holding on to a bracket that we have to remove. So we're gonna do that on both sides and hopefully get this bumper off pretty quick. I got a 10 millimeter on a quarter inch extension, quarter inch ratchet. So on a normal E9X chassis, which is E92, E90, E93, they're all the same. Um, to get the bumper off, you gotta do a few things. Uh, you gotta remove the fender liners and probably some of the under paneling which I don't have on this car at the moment. And then under the hood, you have these torque screws that you gotta remove. So once you get all that fender liner stuff off, there's two eight millimeter bolts holding a bracket right there. So we're gonna loosen those two and hopefully get this bumper off pretty fast. To record, right? Mm -hmm. And then you press it once. So, I'm taking out the headlight now. You can see how bad this looks. So there is two T27s on the top, and there's two in this bracket behind this air dam. And then I believe there's another one on the back side of the headlight over there. So once I get these removed, we can unplug the headlight. And then over here, there is one on the very top, hiding up there. All right, so it was a total of five bolts I had to undo, and I unplugged the main harness. And now I should be able to wiggle this light out of here. Looks like something's still attached. Oh, I have something zip tied to the bottom of it. This um, uh, tire pressure module because I don't have any fender liners, so I gotta take that off. All right, so I got the five bolts undid, unplugged the main harness. If your car has headlight washer system, you might have to disattach some of the headlight washer system. I don't have that. So I'm pulling the headlight out of here. I'll show you guys real quick what the five mounting points are. So you got one, two up top, then you got two on this inner side of the bracket, and then if you spin it around the back, you have one back here. So now that we got both of the headlights out, we're gonna dismantle them completely because in order to remove the lenses, we have to bake them in the oven. So all the components that we can remove is better, that way none of them get damaged. So we're gonna take off the brackets, the caps, the ballast, and the bulbs. So if you look back here, this one twists out. It's kind of tight. But um, you gotta unscrew this, and then you'll be able to get to the bulb. And down here is the ballast. So I'm gonna take these apart. All right guys, so we're gonna break down this headlight. You're gonna need a T20 to remove these torque uh, screws. So first thing we're gonna do is take off this, this plastic cap at the back here. So this cap should just pop right off. And then you can see in here we have the xenon bulb. This connector gets plugged out. And you pinch these two little springs and it releases the light bulb. So we're just gonna put that to the side. The rest of these components are gonna stay. They'll be okay in the oven as long as we don't put the oven temperature too high 
and leave it in there for too long. The next thing we're gonna do is remove this ballast off of the back. So it's the same T20 screws. These, this part right here is actually like the amplifier for the light bulb. So you know the car's uh, electrical system runs on 12 volts and HID stand for high intensity discharge. So it takes that 12 volts and it amplifies it to some number, I'm not sure. But that's what gives it the really bright effect. So here we're gonna find two more plugs. We're gonna pop these out. And put that to the side. Put the screws to the side. There's another little uh, cap over here. I'm not sure what this one is for, but we're gonna remove whatever we could remove just to be safe. So this one has four T20 screws as well. So this, this is gonna give your car a brand new look without spending a ton of money because on average a new headlight for this car is probably like $1,200 for one. And in the used market, they're probably like somewhere between four to seven hundred, depending on the condition. And this one was actually I bought used because the other one got damaged from the hurricane. Pop this guy off. See what this is about. So it looks like there's a little circuit board in there. So we definitely don't want to put this in the oven. And the next thing we're going to remove is this headlight bracket. So if you come over to the side, there's a 10 millimeter bolt holding it on there. We're just going to whiz that one off real quick. And it looks like there's another one near that little computer board. bracket is free so this is unnecessary plastic that we don't want to put in the oven especially because we want to access these tabs here to pry this lens open once once we get it warmed up and I'm not sure but to me what do you guys think it looks like there's something screwed in to the back of the lens I'm thinking it might be this this black overlay. So hopefully that comes out with it. And then there should be another thing to remove here. This little cap over here is a light bulb for the turn signal. It's kind of be a little rough to get out sometimes. You probably need pliers or something. So I'll just give it a good wiggle. And there's the light bulb. You don't want to put that in the oven. So now we're going to just take an overall inspection of the headlight. Um, this rubber thing looks like it's easily burned. So we're going to remove this as well. I should have got new ones of these, but we can always do that afterwards. So that rubber piece comes off. Oh. And there's a cap here with another bulb inside. So we're going to pull this top cap off. Okay, world, we're in the house because we got to put these in the oven. And luckily, this is my house, so I can do whatever the hell I want. If you live with your parents, wait for them to go to work before you attempt this shit, okay? But, um, so here's what you got to do. We got the oven preset to 270. That's what I did some research on Google. That's the temperature they say to soften this material here which is like some butunoline or some shit like that so what we got to do is we're going to do one at a time in the oven we're not going to leave because we don't we want to make sure we don't start deforming the housing we just want it hot enough to soften the plastic or the rubber or whatever so that goes in there and then we wait and when we pop it out We'd start prying 
the casing, the clear lens off of it. I'm hoping once I get this open, I'll have some more space to repair some of this electrical wire. As you can see, the insulation is starting to crack off of it and that can cause electrical shorts. So we're gonna do our best to repair that as well. So the, the, the thing was coming off, but I noticed it was getting stuck in this corner. And then I moved this little tube and there's a screw hiding back there. So make sure you guys get that screw out. It's a T20. Look at this guy. So I just swapped over the components out of this lens into this lens. And so far, everything fits perfectly. So I got this on eBay. And, you know, sometimes those eBay stuff can be a little sketch. But so far, the fitment on this thing is looking great. Everything lines up and bolted down back to where it needs to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the plastic cover back over this and put it to the side. So that way, no debris doesn't get inside of the lens. And then we can start working on modifying the angel eyes. All right, YouTubers. So here's what we did so far. I was working my way around this to get off the old sealant which was pretty time consuming and tricky but i got most of it out so that way when we go to reseal it it won't be a big deal and then i was wondering if i should remove the existing angel eye components and put these in but what i end up doing was i actually attached them on top of it um, because these are more of a universal application and they're not really meant to be uh for this specific headlight so I end up using a little tiny wire tie to strap the the new the new angel eye to the old one. And from a distance, you can't tell that it's there. And on this one, I had to drill a hole because there was no way for the wire to pass through. And that little wire, all it is is like the thing that comes on the bread that you twist together. I just stripped the plastic off of it and just used the wire itself. This way, I don't gotta worry about glue or, or two-sided tape or this actually falling apart when it's driving and then you know you got an angel eye dangling inside of the headlight, nobody wants that. So I figured that way was a lot more secure. All right, today's day two on this headlight restoration project. So this, these wires have exposed insulation. I guess they've been cracking or whatever the case is. So we're gonna go get some supplies so we can finish this job up. And also um, I'm thinking about using like a liquid electrical tape to just kind of paint it, paint the insulation on there rather than trying to wrap it with tape because it can get pretty messed up. Well, we're gonna get electric tape as well. And then try to find some more of this uh, like safety wire, uh, like this thin one, so I can secure it as good as possible. This is the E84. This is the E92. We're going to take the F30 today. My Ridgeline still has 328 wheels on it from an from a E92 that I was parting out way back when. I'm gonna be selling this truck, so the motor needs to be replaced. I was gonna fix it, but then I changed my mind. I wanna use the money to finish fixing up the X1. So let's go to AutoZone, guys. I parked the car sideways like this because there's a telephone wire that runs across my driveway and the birds be sitting on there and they poop on your car and they got like nuclear acid poop that strips your paint. So on the F30, the hood started peeling. So we're gonna have to fix that eventually. So I got some tape and some zip ties for some other stuff. But I was looking in the electrical section for the liquid electric tape wasn't finding it but over here in the permit section we found it liquid electrical tape all 
right guys AutoZone didn't have the steel wire so we're here at Ace Hardware okay guys we found the steel wire at Ace Hardware so at least this this way I can really secure that halo and uh, we got some goo gone to clean up any of that butyl sealant that we got on stuff we don't want it on and now we're going to get some paint since we're here because my carbon fiber inserts on my on my carbon fiber hood are starting to fade from the sun so i'm just going to cover them up and paint them gloss black okay youtubers so here's what's going on this thing is what i used to fix the cracking wires because electrical tape is it's not so easy to do it's just a pain in the ass this was a lot better option so as you can see here i went and coated some of these wires that were starting to crack with the electrical liquid tape and over here was really bad and you guys can see i coated all those wires because once the copper is exposed if they start touching other wires you can cause uh short circuits and this is the steel wire that I'm using to secure the lights or the angel eyes to the existing ones. Um, before, I was using like the little thing from the bread, but um, they were like a little bit too short for me to have enough room to twist it. So now I got one long continuous strand. I can cut it exactly how I need it. So I think it's about time to put in that butyl sealant and try to put this lens back on here okay world the lights are tested so we're gonna seal back the headlight lens so I'm gonna be using this butyl sealant as you can see it comes in like this black rope we're gonna just put it along the channel here where the headlight lens sits I cleaned it out as best as I could I mean, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but, you know, as long as the headlight seals, that's what matters. So I'm going to start laying this stuff down. So there you have it, people. One finished product. That looks amazing. It looks like I bought a brand new headlight. And not to mention that these crazy angel eyes are going to look sick at the car meets. So um, when I was applying the lens it was a little bit difficult to get these to latch I used a heat gun to help soften it up a little bit and then I used the pliers to help squeeze it the rest of the way and that method worked out great because I was scared to put the light back in the oven because I didn't want to mess up the new lens okay guys so now we got the headlights installed and uh, we're on to the wiring phase I already did this side I'm gonna show you guys how I wired it so it came with like a, a harness but it's like a universal application so I'm not gonna use the harness this piece right here is actually from my old LED angel eye bulb so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut this harness here this is gonna plug into the angel eye plug and then the blue and white wire I'm gonna wire to power and ground and that's gonna light up the, the angel eyes so this is um what you call it polarity sensitive so positive has to be with positive and negative has to be with negative once i finish wiring this one up i'll show you guys how they look guys guys what a transformation look at this so both of them are working now they work with the headlight switch I'm going to just give you a close-up of the wiring. So we have the red wire going to the white wire and the black wire going to the blue wire. And then this sub-connector plugs into the existing angel eye plug. And also, there's another sub-harness. So if the little ballast goes bad for the LEDs, you can replace it itself. I just tuck them inside of there. All you got to do is like pull them out. 